Hello everyone, my name is Kannan. For the next 30 minutes or so, I'll be taking you through the S404 Central Procurement Solutions. So I'm, I'm the director, I'm the engineering lead for the Central Procurement Development Organizations based out of Bangalore, India. So along with me, Neela is also a co-presenter who will be showcasing a demo for our topics. So with this, I would like to get it started. So the content contains the product roadmap and also the features. So it cannot be taken for uh, legal obligations, etc. So first of all, let's start uh, today's agenda. As per uh, today's agenda, I would like to cover on the what is uh, S4 and for central procurement and what's the business need, what value that it brings for the customers, what are the key deliverables that are planned for 2022 and also the vision of our product. And uh, the next one is also what are the key scenarios that are covered as part of uh, S4 and for central procurement, followed by a short demo uh, which covers one of the scenarios that is being supported in the central procurement scenarios and also the roadmap. So with this, I would like to get it started. What is the whole purpose of S4 and for central procurement and why? As you know that, you know, the large enterprises have got headquarters in one location. And at the same time, they also have the subsidiaries which are located in multiple cities or in different geography locations. In such cases, when they are doing a procurement process, it also happens so that, you know, it is leading to a kind of a process inefficiency. And also the, the, during the time of negotiation of uh, the prices and things like that, it leads to a kind of, not a kind of uh, the best price that we can able to get through. Yeah, so for example, the different buyers of the organizations, they try to negotiate for the same material and also for the same suppliers without knowing each other's requirement. And this also leads to kind of uh, the loss of uh, the money for the company as a whole. So with the central procurement, we are trying to totally address all the problems. And also it brings a kind of complete transparency in terms of all the procurement relevant informations which are taking place in all the subsidiary environment. And at the same time, it also brings a kind of implementing the compliance, the process compliance quite easily. Earlier, it was quite difficult. And even if, uh, if the user wants to create a kind of a contract out of all these negotiation process, you can able to do that and then distribute this information back to the kind of the relevant subsidiaries and uh, for their regular procurement process. So what are the key command centers? So what are the key capabilities? So as I already outlined about the key challenges and how this brings value to the customers, this front of our central procurement is revolving around centralizing the procurement activities in, the, in one single system. But at the same time, it also facilitates in terms of enabling the kind of a local executions. Yeah. So as I already outlined, the subsidiaries are located in various locations and they are also using different, different systems. For example, they may be using SAP systems, non-SAP systems, or it could be like they are using on-premise or S4 cloud solutions, etc. So with the central procurement, what happens is all the procurement data that are getting pulled to the hub system, and it also brings a kind of a benefit for the end users. End user, I mean the central purchaser to monitor and also manage their demands in a centralized fashion. In the central procurement, he can able to have the complete visibility of all the document, manage the approval process centrally, and also manage the output you know, sending the purchase or output to the suppliers in a centralized fashion. So we need not configure all the backend systems for the for the output management, et cetera. So even if the user wants to create a kind of central contract, he can able to directly create it and also distribute to the relevant backend systems. Yeah, what are the different activities? Having said all the benefits, et cetera, let's move on to the, what are the different activities that can be carried out in the, hub system. So hub system, I mean the S4 for central procurement system. So the central requisitions whereby the users can be able to create the requisitions, not only for the hub system, but also for the for any of the backend systems. And coming to the central purchasing, he can be able to manage the requisitions, all the requisitions in the centralized cockpit, what we have delivered. And also the creation of contracts, sourcing process, etc. Last but not the least is, you know, without analytics, nothing is complete. So with analytics, there is a complete transformation and also the user can be able to track the, the processes, the documents, uh, status, et cetera. 
Yeah. So what are the key benefits for the customers? One of the customers has given a feedback that is Corona for Center for Chemical Acts as a kind of one-stop solution for their daily businesses. And the customers need not jump from one system to the other system for the details, et cetera. The values are already listed out. So in, in a nutshell, it, it brings a kind of consolidation of all the different systems into, into kind of less number of systems, thereby it brings the TCO, reduce the TCOs for the customers, and at the same time, reduce the complexity, and then brings the kind of uh, implement the complex complex factors across this across the company. Yeah, so <clears throat> what are the uh, core processes, as, as I mentioned? So one of the important aspect is the command center or the control center, as I already outlined in the previous slide deck, the approval process, the output, managing the output, etc. And at the same time, the demand aggregations. So one of the important the drawback with the previous uh, solutions are like you know the, 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 there is no visibility of the requisitions, the complete visibility. And here the, the central purchaser has got the complete visibility of the demand, the overall demand, and thereby the users can able to bundle the requests to for the follow-on process. And at the same time, we also enabled the kind of a feature that is called the automation of the requisitions to convert these things to the follow-on documents. And then the enterprise contract orchestration, so thereby creating the central contract and distribute to the backend systems, et cetera. Yeah. What are the key deliverables that are planned as part of 2022? Some of them already shipped to the customers and, and also what are the visions that are planned as part of our future releases? The major deliverables in 2022 are the confirmation app, the confirmation that can be done by the by the casual users directly in the Ariba system without navigating to the Esperana systems. And also the uh, purchase order confirmations, the supplier confirmations. Yeah. So this can be done directly by the by the users in the hub systems. So and this information is again taken back directly to the up to the purchase orders in the app uh, in the backend systems. And at the same time, the um, simulation of central contracts. Uh, so the user can get to know about it without uh, distributing the contract. Before distributing the contract, the users can come to know about it. And also the print relevant changes, et cetera. The item hierarchies is the, one of the last features that got implemented in uh, 2022. Let's also take a look at uh, what are the vision for uh, 2023. So here, uh, you know, we are also coming up with a new solution called the intelligent material group proposals. So when the user enters the, uh, you know, free text items and also enters the material group, the system would automatically suggest what would be the more appropriate based on the previously entered values. And that's what the intelligence that we are building it. And this is planned as part of 2023. And also the price update. So when the supplier is going to confirm the purchase orders, he can able to revise the price information. And this is again planned to be taken and updated back to the purchase order information. Yeah. And then the guided simulation for the MOS changes. And we are also planning to embed directly the supplier confirmation in the inbox so that the user need not navigate to the backend systems and the supplier print reviews. So what are the key scenarios that are supported in the s central procurement systems? So let me start with the uh, with the solution. So the user can able to create directly the requisitions either in the Ariba system or in the s systems. Once this information is created, so the, the data is taken back to the to the backend system. And then the, if the data is completed, then the PO is also created automatically. At the same time, the casual user also can be able to see the requisitions in the hub systems to check on the status, et cetera, and he can also keep track of it. And as I mentioned that, you know, he can also, he or she can able to do the confirmations in the hub systems. And at the same time, you know, we also talked about the central purchasing scenario. See, these requisitions are also taken to the hub system as the proxy POs, or sorry, proxy PRs, and for further processings. And uh, so here <clears throat> we also deliver the kind of automation rules, whereby if the if the the source supply is missing, then it can be assigned automatically, or it can be done create a kind of purchase orders automatically. Yeah. So if once the purchase orders are done, then it is also sent to the suppliers for the for the delivery of the goods, etc. And in case uh, if uh, the if we don't have enough supplier or relevant suppliers, then it can be taken for the sourcing process and then create the follow-on document from there on. 
and additionally we also delivered you know in case if the casual user wants to make a requisitions without knowing the price he can also do a kind of simple price request which means before the purchase requisitions getting approved he can also request for quotations and it is sent for the approval process yeah so <clears throat> these are the various uh, key scenarios so as i also mentioned that you know we, the user can also be able to create the kind of central contracts directly with the with by bundling the purchase requisitions and it also taken to the directly to the back end systems etc and in case if they want to go for the real sourcing process that also can be performed so these are the various scenarios so let's also look at the uh, integration scenarios to in a much closer view on this so as i already outlined with the central requisitions the user creates a guided buying request in the in the ariba systems and then this information is again replicated um, to the s4 on the system and then to the back end systems for further processing at the same time we also deliver the what data apis using as a kind of external channel for updating the request etc and uh, the tracking is also possible for the casual users at any given point of time to see where the things are happening and also to the kind of uh, the goods confirmation etc so let's also look at uh, the uh, other central purchasing scenarios which are they de are getting delivered as part of this one of our central procurement once the requisitions reaches the back end system this information is again pulled to the hub system for the transparency and also for better visibility for the central purchasers and then as a follow on document can be created um, uh, so kind of central contract can be created and uh, <clears throat> at the same time you know in case if there are enough uh, in no source supply source supply can be filled by the users and uh, as i already outlined the uh, the automation rules can be performed to create the kind of a follow on document be it the creation of uh, the purchase orders directly in the back end systems or it could be like uh, the creation of uh, the quotations request for quotations in the hub systems etc so moving on to the uh, next one is the supplier confirmations which are currently uh, partly under development and some of the features are already developed as for and delivered as part of 2208 and uh, here the supplier confirmations can be created directly by the purchaser on behalf of the supplier and this information is also getting updated to the back end purchase orders with the confirmation data also we are coming up with a new service um, the services which means that electronically the the suppliers can able to send the data and this is getting captured and also processed in the hub system and this information is also updated back directly to the purchase orders even we can also configure the approval process you know now coming to the central contract scenario which is the third scenario which is also in the view so the user can able to bundle the requisitions and create the the central purchase contract in the hub systems and then this is getting distributed as a kind of outline agreement in the back end systems also this also information it's also integrated with the strategic contract so strategy contract can create it directly and then distribute or cascade this information as a central purchase contract yeah and as i also mentioned that you know if there is no supplier available then it can also go for the central sourcing process or through for the even for more sophisticated solution is the product sourcing so we also come up with a new solution called the contract price renegotiations thereby the price can be renegotiated upon the expiry of the contract or if the contract is uh, getting exhausted yeah. all right so with this i would like to hand over to neela to for a short demo and uh, she has given she will with uh, by seeing the demo you will you will have a kind of better understanding over to you neela thank you so much hi everybody i am neela kannan has explained us in detail the benefits of central procurement now it's time to go through a demo of the same I'll be covering central requisitioning, central purchasing, and central contract management in this demo. Let's start with central requisitioning. I've already logged into the Launchpad as an employee, and I'm going to access this application, create purchase requisition, in order to create a new shopping cart. Here, I'll have this option, create item, using which I could add a new item to the shopping cart. I'll quickly search for the material that I want to add. most of the details are pre-populated the only detail that i won't like to maintain is the quantity after maintaining the quantity i'll add the item to the cart 
So this is the quick overview. I'll order the shopping cart. I'll continue and order. Here I've got the shopping cart number which got created. I'll quickly copy this and then I'll go to my purchase requisition application where I could search for this PR which is already created. The reason why I'm coming here is to check the status of the shopping cart. I could see that this is already approved. If I go to the item details, I could also see whether this is already replicated to the relevant connected system or not. Let's check that. See, this is the purchase requisition that got replicated to the connected system based on the shopping cart that I've created in Hub. Now, let's log in as a central purchaser and then see how as a central purchaser, I could access the purchase requisitions from multiple connected system and work on the same. For this, I have already logged in as a central purchaser. Here, I'll access this application process purchase requisitions centrally. Here I already have the work list set with the correct search criteria and I could see that there are three purchase requisition items to be processed. Here this last purchase requisition item is the one that is the replicated purchase requisition which got created based on the shopping cart that I've created as an employee. Now this is one stop application where a central purchaser can work on all the demands that are aggregated from multiple connected systems. As a central purchaser, I will be able to apply these actions to the purchase requisition. For example, closing the purchase requisition item or reassigning the purchasing group. I could also choose to create follow-on documents for the purchase requisition items such as central purchase contract, central purchase contract hierarchy, RF, central RFQ, sourcing project, etc. I could also choose to add the purchase requisition items to an existing purchase order or to an existing central contract or sourcing project. Now for this demo, what I'm going to show is that I'm sure there are no valid source of supply for these purchase requisition items and I would like to create a central contract for the same so that the distributed contract can later be used as a source of supply for these PR items. I've chosen all the three purchase requisition items and I'm clicking on create central purchase contract. A central purchase contract is now created with reference to the purchase requisition items. I'll fill in the general details or the header information. Now that all the header information is filled, let's go to the item details. Here we could see three items that are created with reference to the purchase requisition items. I'll fill the net price for all the three items. I am only mentioning the base price for these items. I can also choose to mention the conditions by maintaining discounts and other price details. If we go to the item details, we could see the distribution that is already created for it. This distribution entry is created based on the details that are available in the purchase requisition item. There is only one distribution maintained, so the distribution percentage is 100%. Since almost all the details are already there, I will release the central purchase contract. We could see that the purchase, central purchase contract is already approved and distributed. Let's get to see the distributed contract details. So this is the distributed contract in the connected system. Now let's quickly go back to process purchase requisition application and see the status of the purchase requisition items. Here we could see that for all the processing status have changed to contract created. I will try to assign a source of supply for one of these purchase requisition items. Here, I should be able to see the distributed purchase contract, which I could see here. I'll select the item and I'll click on assign to assign the source of supply. Now that source of supply is assigned, I should be able to create a PO for this purchase requisition item.
Here, a purchase order is created with reference to the PR item that is selected. I can choose to order, save or process it in expert mode. Now, I'll save it with health status so that I could work on the PO later on. This is the PO that got created for the PR item. Moving back, if I refresh the screen, I could see that the processing status of the purchase requisition have changed to PO created. With this simple flow, we have completed one flow of procurement processes covering central requisitioning, central purchasing and central contract management. Here, the user is able to work with multiple connected systems with ease directly from Hub. Hope you have enjoyed the demo. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Neela, for the wonderful demo. And at least this, this gives a kind of better clarity for the audience to get to know about it. And uh, with this, I would also like to take you to the roadmap sections. So as I already outlined, you know, these are the key deliverables which are planned as part of 2022, especially <clears throat> in terms of enabling the casual users to do the confirmations directly in the, uh, in the Ariba systems. And also the supplier confirmations, we are enabling it in the hub systems whereby the purchasers can be able to do the confirmations and also in an automated fashion that we are also planning to bring in and the simulation of contract, etc. that we are planning it. Additionally, for uh, as a vision of our product uh, in the next year, upcoming years or in the releases, we are also planning to integrate the material group with the intelligent material process, which is uh, using the machine learning capabilities. And also the, the price, uh, the output can be controlled via configurations. The price of uh, the output can be controlled for the purchase orders. And then the price update from the suppliers can also be adjusted, or I would say the supplier can be able to alter the prices and then send back this information back to the purchasers to, to use it uh, for further processing, et cetera. So these are the key deliverables for, um, for this. And the, as part of the roadmap, this information is also available in our portals. So please take a look at it. And uh, for any sort of clarifications also, you can also reach out to us. We are almost nearing the end of the completion of the sessions, but I would like to take a few seconds here that there are enough materials and contents are available. Please go through this at your own leisure to, to enrich your knowledge and also to share your knowledge to the rest of the audience. With this, I would like to have a kind of a big thank you to all the audience for taking your valuable time for joining the sessions. I hope this session brings uh, some knowledge uh, to you on this related to the Central Park Camera. Thank you so much once again. Thank you.